I want to tell you a bit about uh, a project that is relevant to today's discussion uh, in a lot of ways, both because it has to do with space and because it has to do with an, uh, a slightly different twist on a way of doing things. Um, the B612 Foundation is a nonprofit corporation, so we're trying to do something a little slightly different, and we're trying to do what I think is, I think you'll, you'll see, is a fairly ambitious project, among the most ambitious private projects that, that I can imagine. And uh, I want to give you a little bit of a flavor of why I think it's so important, and, and hopefully you'll think it's an important thing to do, too, because I like this planet, so. So first off, um, one of my favorite pictures. On the moon, uh, it was mentioned earlier and uh, by Bill that uh, there are tons of craters. And, uh, and they're there because there are lots of little bits of solar system that never really made it into planets, and they fly around the sun. They orbit the sun in stable orbits, and uh, they run into stuff. So um, it was mentioned that on February 15th, two weeks from now, um, we're going to have a close shape. There's going to be an asteroid it's called by a very creative name, 2012 DA14. Uh, it's discovered only one year ago, and it's about half the size of the Stanford Stadium, which is right over there. Uh, that makes it just a bit bigger than the asteroid that struck in Tunguska in 19, June 30, 1908. That, when that hit, that took out an area of about 1,000 square miles, uh, which is, if you drew a circle from the middle of San Francisco down to just south here, say San Jose, and drew a big circle, that's the area of total destruction. Okay, so this is slightly bigger than that. And it's missing the Earth by 17,000 miles. Now remember, the Earth is a moving target. It goes around the sun at about 65,000 miles an hour. So it is really only missing the Earth by about 14 minutes. Okay, so it's pretty darn close. And I want to tell you, and so this is a really a, a indication of, uh, you know, sort of a nice reminder of the fact that these things, uh, there's lots of big ones out there that form a lot of these craters that you can see. This is a, just a fireball taken uh, somewhere in Europe. Uh, anybody here see the fireball over San Francisco about two months ago? I, I heard it, didn't realize what it was at the time. Sonic boom. Um, that was roughly a one meter asteroid. Put out an energy about half of what the Hiroshima bomb was, something like that. Deposited very, very high altitude, and then landed up landing in Marin County. Um, the point of the, all this is, is that we know how many of these things there are. It's a matter of counting. We, we actually have a lot of spacecraft that look down at the Earth. And what are, they looking at? what are they looking down for? Nuclear weapons tests and missile launches. But what do they mostly see? Those. That data has been declassified. You can count these things. We actually know how many asteroids there are as a function of size. At the sort of one meter, two meter, the sort of car size things, um, it turns out we get hit by sort of a Hiroshima scale asteroid about once a year, believe it or not. Um, and so that data is extremely well known. At the very upper end, the big craters, the ones you see on the moon, uh, we know exactly how many there are of those, too, because you can count. And that's, that's what you can count craters, and you can divide by the age of the moon, account for the fact that early on there were more impacts, and voila, we know how many asteroids there are. So it looks like this, a little bit of an eye chart. But the way you read it is size of the asteroid this way, number of asteroids this way, the little... Uh, circles, that's the actual data. Okay, so it looks like a power law. Lots of small ones, not so many big ones. The error bars are actually about the size of the circles, very small. We know how many asteroids there are. We really, really know this. I've labeled here Tunguska, that was the one in 1908, sort of a 10 megaton-ish impact. The one at the end is the uh, one that killed off the dinosaurs, really big, 40,000 gigatons or so, something like that. Um, Okay, uh, down here again, if you, you, the other way to read instead of number, you can talk about how often they hit. If you run across that way, you find that the Earth gets hit by a Tunguska-like asteroid about once every couple of hundred years. 